Apprenticeships and CTE. My objective today is to help you learn about how CTE and YTP can collaboratively support students on their pathway to apprenticeships in particular. And um, I understand that both the world of, of CTE and YTP are much larger than just apprenticeships, but we'll make that our focus point um, for today's session. So, the first question that comes up is what is CTE? And there are two different resources that, that I access to just provide some of the context to help us understand where it's coming from. The first one here is from the National Technical Assistance Center on Transition, the Collaborative, and it's their operational definition of CTE. Um, career technical education is a sequence of courses that prepare students for a specific job or career at various levels, from trade or craft positions to technical, business or professional careers. So we have a big um, idea of what we're trying to, to accomplish, but we're trying to move people into professional careers as, as possible. Um, and as NTEC does with all of their predictors of, of post-school success, and career technical education is one of these predictors, they provide us with a number of essential program characteristics just to help us see how that works once we implement this um, at the field level. So, the first one is provide a sequence of entry-level and advanced integrated academic and vocational courses designed to improve students' reasoning and problem-solving skills academic knowledge, word attitudes, specific occupational and or technical skills and general skills needed for employment. Now, for most of us YTP folks, it's probably familiar that we do a lot of this uh, through YTP already. And a lot of these might be referred to as soft skills, but there are also some very specific technical skills that come into play. And it's bringing those two components together. Also noteworthy here is that we are looking at different levels of courses that are being offered. So there needs to be at least an entry level and an advanced um, level of, of courses. And once we talk to Oregon, we'll learn that they also have an intermediate level in between yet. The second one is to provide a combination of in-school and community-based academic competency-based uh, applied and hands-on learning experiences in the career pathways based on the local labor market. And the local labor market here, I think, is a really, really important thing because we know that many of our students don't necessarily want to move across the state um, or across the country to work in their preferred occupations. So trying to bring the find, find occupations that are valuable close by is going to be very, very important. The third step or the third uh, essential program characteristics is to provide connections to post-secondary education and or employment through site visits and connections with support services. So for example, VR, which we work with a lot, as well as other disability support services. Next up, provide opportunities to earn certificates in certain career areas. The examples given here are a CNA, welding, food handlers uh, certifications, and, and there are many other opportunities. And um, again, welding is the closest to a trade that we have on the list here, um, but, but you can upgrade them or you can go to a slightly higher level than some of these and, and you get into the, the trade occupations that uh, we'll be talking about. Next up is develop business partnerships to ensure a relevant curriculum. Um, which is really important because if we don't understand the needs of an industry, we don't know how to train people to work in the industry. And so working hand in hand is going to be important to provide successful pathways. The sixth essential program characteristic is provide career counseling and guidance to assist students in career planning and development aligned with a student's preferences, interests, needs and skills. Um, I know that again, Career counseling is something that as YTP transition specialists and as partnering VR counselors and, and teachers, we do a fair bit of. Um, and it's, it's giving students opportunities to explore along their uh, options what the most um, appropriate pathway is for them to look at or the most appropriate careers that aligns with their uh, preferences, interests, needs and skills. 
Next up, provide instruction in career development through volunteer work, job shadowing, work study, apprenticeships, or internships. Um, this is maybe not necessarily the right order in terms of length of, of engagement, but uh, where apprenticeships certainly have the, the are the most time consuming training component. But all of these are valuable ways to get to know um, a, a, a occupation and, and how all of that works out in the real world. Next up, we have uh, provide accommodation and support in CTE courses to ensure student access and mastery of content. And that really speaks to uh, supporting students to really get to the core of what they need to be able to do to work, be proficient in these, um, these careers. Um, essential program characteristic number nine is provide instruction and soft skills like problem solving, communication, uh, sorry, communicating with authority figures, responding to feedback, promptness and occupational specific skills such as clerical or machine operation um, and it's it's being proficient in both areas the soft skills as well as the occupational skills that helps people master their occupation and then the last one on this list is to measure achievement in soft skills um, again problem solving communicating with authority figures responding to feedback prompt and promptness um, as well as the occupational skills so measuring how how we gain skills and how skills improve over time which is going to be a key component so this is the introduction um, for our, or introduction to CTE as a um, predictor of post school success for students say, meaning that if we have a program in place in a school that students can access that provides um, or, or accounts for these 10 essential program characteristics then students are more likely to be successful in post-school life. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is uh, set at the national level, um, and we want to get to our Oregon-specific level to dive into a little bit more detail of how Oregon has built a CTE system um, that tries to align with some of the ANTAC skills, uh, ANTAC lists here. Um, but before we go there, the other thing to mention is that um, NTEG works specifically on um, transition services for students experiencing disabilities, while the CTE program that's been implemented in the state of Oregon is accessible to all students. So some of the things that are mentioned in these essential program characteristics um, might not show up as easily or um, obviously uh, in the way we implement CTE in the state of Oregon across our high schools and community colleges. So what does it look like in Oregon then? Korean Technical Education is an educational program for high school and community college students based on individual interests and industry need. CTE compromises, uh, comprises pro programs offered in six career areas. We have agriculture, food and natural resource systems. We have arts, information and communications, uh, business and management, health sciences, human resources, and finally industrial and engineering systems. And as you can see, three out of these six are in bold letters here. And those are the ones that, generally speaking, our apprenticeship programs fall under, um, at least the majority of them. Um, CTE includes intentional programs in high-wage, in-demand areas. CTE prepares and supports students in acquiring the technical skills, professional practices and academic knowledge critical for success in highly skilled careers. And I think there are some, some really good pointers on this last slide here that I have up at this point, where it says we want to look at highly skilled careers. Um, but we also want to look at the in-demand and high-wage areas. So it's not just entry-level ways. It's trying to help students uh, discover career pathways um, to, to start a career that they can pursue as long as they would like to, but potentially uh, till the end of their working years. So what makes our CTE programs tick? What are some core, core components? Within these two definitions, the second one coming from um, the uh, CTE handbook that the Department of Education has uh, put out, 
Um, districts offering CTE courses collaborate with partners to ensure their curriculum is aligned with industry needs. So within doing that, they align with community colleges and other institutions above and beyond, but at a very minimum, and the way the federal law around this is written, they're required to connect with community colleges, local community colleges, to, to identify the, the needs, uh, training needs for students. They can, um, above and beyond, go to four-year universities um, or, or other trades programs, but it has to be in alignment with the local community college. Um, they should make sure that uh, in industry training standards are met, um, both technical and academic, whatever the requirements for the specific trade are, um, need to be addressed. And again, at the high school level, at least at an exploration level. Um, or a foundational level. Um, whatever is happening in a CTE pro program needs to be validated by local or regional employers or industry groups, which means that our schools and, and the C great CTE teachers that we partner with can't just go out and create a program and say, here's our career technical education program and, and we're going to meet the needs of the community, but they really have to partner directly with the local employers or at least um, representatives of the industries to make sure that what they're teaching actually is helpful on the pathway to uh, employment. And then also it needs to be a focus on high demand and high wage career areas. So again, it's not just finding those entry level jobs within these apprenticeship programs. You often start at an entry level, but as you gain experience and uh, obtain your certification, you are going to get a significantly better wage rate um, in the foreseeable future. And then finally, high school programs need to be aligned with post-secondary programs. So this goes back to, um, at the very minimum, the local or regional career, co uh, sorry, community colleges, but also other programs that offer training programs. And students that start a CTE program at the local school are not required to, to end up at the community college. They can go to any school that they would like to go to. So. If you prefer to go to a uh, union or non-union trade uh, training program facility, that's okay. You don't have to go through the community college to end up in the career that you would like to pursue. Some things to remember, and, and I think this is really, really important um, as we look at, at CTE is CTE programs are not primarily designed as a direct funnel into apprenticeship programs. They're really um, designed to open the door to, to prepare students or to be better prepared, but to be coordinated um, with these post-secondary programs to be more ready uh, to, to start. So they lay the foundation of the ultimate goal that, that students might want to achieve. Um, and so students participating in CTE within their high school programs are more prepared to enter those corresponding post-secondary programs, but they're not required to take that route. Um, why CTE and why CTE for YTP students in particular? Um, career technical exploration education is a great way to explore different career pathways. So you might have a student who takes a CTE class in one career field and decides, hmm, this is not really what I want to do. Maybe I want to try something different and the next term switches and, and takes a different class. Um, but it gives them some experience of what it is like to work in uh, the specific career field. So that could include experiencing some of the environment, um, the sounds, the smells, the tasks and the tools that are required in that specific uh, career. Um, and it's up to the schools and, and their program to create systems that are closer aligned with the actual work environment or maybe not as closely in line, depending on the resources available to them. There's also the component of skills training. And whenever you go through a CTE class, you're gonna walk away with some skills. Whether you decide to, to follow through and, and pursue this as a career pathway or not, there's something that you, you can learn. And a lot of it are what we often talk about as work readiness skills. So that 
includes things like communication, teamwork, problem solving, um, personal management, as well as career management. Understanding that when you enter a career, um, there's always an entry level pathway to get your foot in the door. But once you're in a career, there, there are ways to advance, to uh, obtain and develop additional skills and to grow and, and to move up the ladder, whether that's from um, being a, a carpenter and just doing the entry level job side work to moving up to uh, being a crew leader, crew manager, or even own, owning your own business within the field. There are many ways of, of advancing and moving forward. Um, and, and then also the, the career specific skills. And then finally, um, as the, the third and most direct pathway into a uh, apprenticeship program is that path to the industry recognized certification. So again, if you access these programs, if you take, take those class, CTE classes in school and you know what your career pathway is and you take the corresponding courses, you're gonna be more prepared to enter a vocational training program than if you didn't do that. Um, and then obtaining uh, and completing the certification process opens the door to, to great jobs in the future. So what to do after school is, is a question. If, if our students graduate, if they've taken some CTE classes, what's going to happen with them? Um, I've, I've said it a few times, but in general, if, if they've successfully participated in CTE classes, it should be far easier to open the door to these apprenticeship programs. They might have speci specific knowledge or general knowledge that will make them more likely to be uh, accepted into these programs and they'll have a better understanding of what the expectations within these career pathways might be. So as part of that, uh, as transition specialists, uh, you can help students enroll in these apprenticeship programs through community colleges or other training programs. Um, I, in preparation of this meeting, I had a, a fairly long conversation with Dan Findlay, who is working at the Department of Education in, in the CTE program. And he says one of the key things to do if, if you have students that want to get into an apprenticeship program is to help them be connected to the accessibility services at their training school um, or, or community college. Because a lot of times these programs are not the, the best prepared to work with students with disabilities. It's the um, student services, or sorry, accessibility services that open the door for success um, for these students in those programs. And then another thing to remember is no matter how, how closely you work with a student and help them be successful, not every student is ready to start their apprenticeship right out of high school. Um, so while it is a, a helpful to start a career early, some students might just need some time to explore what they really want to do and, and take some time in that, and that's okay. So acknowledge that it, it's great to get some skills and get some ideas, but also to continue to exploring. So it's not always just about pushing them into these programs. Um, so with that being said, if, if you have students that are them find work in a field that they find interesting and engaging and if they're not ready to commit to a career and, and a long-term training program that'll set them up for a, a great pathway in employment um, maybe they just need something for the short term or mid-range term to engage in employment and and see what they really want to do down the road as i mentioned i, I had a good conversation with um with Dan with the Department of Education and there are some things that really stood out in this conversation. Um, one of them was he, he said something along the lines of there's not a great deal of inclusivity built into the design of CTE but systems can change and I thought that was that was a, a interesting note he made because he provided some insight or insider knowledge from his perspective as someone who has worked with CTE programs for many years um, and understand some of the, the challenges that students uh, experiencing disabilities face into these programs. Um, interestingly, he said in his experiences, most of the pushback of having students with disabilities engage in CTE programs actually comes from admin level positions like principals that that um, 
that are scared of the potential of injuries um, in these programs for students with disabilities and not so much by the, from the instructors or the students themselves. Um, and, and he said that the work that YTP has done in schools and in, in trying to um, inspire systems change has been helpful and that schools that have been hesitant initially have opened the door to, uh, to students with disabilities um, and have had some really good experiences. So here are some, some other things that came up in, in our conversation. About 40% of students enrolled in community colleges experience some form of visibility or invisible, visible or invisible disability. Um, I thought that was a really interesting uh, quote that came from his experience working at a community college. And he said that number has been pretty consistent for some time. So that means that there are lots of students that access these programs, um, CTE specific programs as well, um, that need extra supports. And that's why he said it's so important to connect the students with your accessibility services at, at the college level, college campus or at the training facility, because they will help to ensure student success where students might struggle without those additional supports. And instructors are not always um, ready to think about outside the box uh, pathways to do this. For example, I think he mentioned that that he heard of a student who entered an, wanted to enter an apprenticeship program um, and I want to say it was auto mechanics or some sort of a mechanics field and the student was an amputee and I, I didn't ask which limbs they were missing, um, but he said it was an amputee student and initially the the instructor said, I can't have the student in my courses because there's no way they can do perform the tasks that they need to perform um, based on their best knowledge um, of, of what is required in the job. And so with the help of the Disability Services Department um, and, and some other advocates, they were able to push back on this instructor and say, you can't really imagine what this what the student can achieve um, without having been in their footsteps and why don't you give this student a chance and so hesitantly the instructor agreed and and he had to let go from some of the methods he was teaching and let the student explore ways of uh, accomplishing the tasks that that they needed to accomplish but did so very successfully and that student did, did a great job and was able to complete the, their apprenticeship program um, so with, with some of this in mind, when you have a conversation with a CTE instructor, whether it's um, at the high school level or at the community uh, college level, here are some, some things that you can use as talking points, especially when there's some hesitation of letting students into these courses. Um, one of them, based on the example I just said, is rather than say this is what a student can or can't do, is let's have a conversation about how we can help this student be successful um, and, and listen to the student and their ideas. You can demonstrate a specific skill um, the way that you would expect it to be performed by a quote unquote normal person or a person not experiencing a disability. But if you have a student with a disability, let them explore a way to be proficient in the same task in a way that they can manage with their, given their abilities. Um, another one that I think was even, even more, is, it might come across as more pushy, but, but was to say, don't stand in the path of a student's success. Don't, dis, don't become the deciding factor of whether a student can or can't do something but let them experience that and let them determine that and, and that give them a chance to be successful even if you think they can't. And then here's another interesting quote and I wanted to, going back to what I said earlier about students maybe not being ready to enroll in an apprenticeship program. Um, Dan said the average age of uh, students enrolling in CTE at Portland Community College is around 28 years. Um, knowing that most of our students graduate high school when they're 18, maybe 19, and if they are able to access transition services, might be working with us till they're 21, that still gives them a good seven years to get to the average entry point into some of these trades. 
I'm not saying this to say pump the brakes, but realistically, a lot of people just need that extra time to be able to commit and to decide what they want to do. And um, I think it's an encouragement to us that even if we spark the interest and we might um, open the, the door for them to end up in a um, apprenticeship down the road, it's not necessarily um, the only way to do that. On my last slide here, I have a couple of resources. Those are all online resources. So once this is posted to our YTP website, you'll be able to access those. Um, that give you some information of getting into, uh, getting more information about apprenticeships, how to um, access them, uh, access them, how to even identify what an apprenticeship is. And they, they range from um, Oregon specific, like the apprenticeship trade list at the top, to um, the local or the, I guess a statewide CTE policies, um, but then also some, some national information in there. And it's, it's a really interesting point to look at. The one thing across all the apprenticeship uh, research I've done over the last couple of weeks to get ready for today was to say that there's a significant shortage of skilled laborers and, and they're look sought after in just about every profession and if you get into these these trades it's generally speaking a very lucrative career um, in terms of of your uh, return of investment of time and energy um, so any questions so far not hearing an awful lot. So I've invited Corey and Shasta to join us today. And I think I saw both of them uh, join us here. Hello. And I'm going to try and spotlight you once I find okay. you. So I have people a question, can... Garrett. Go ahead. Um, I worked with the, uh, uh, for the uh, painters union up in Portland. Yep. And we got a guy into a, a, an apprenticeship program and he was very committed. Um, but after about a year, I mean, we tried everything. He could not uh, get beyond a certain point in the apprenticeship program. And um, they were unwilling to, you know, uh, just let him stay as a, uh, uh, at the level that he was able to achieve, which was considerable. He was great at uh, masking and, uh, and doing some of the prep work, but he wasn't fast enough uh, to do uh, to meet their their goals. Is mm -hmm. there any way we can work with uh, the unions to uh, accommodate folks a little more? I think being an advocate is a key component, helping them understand that, yes, sometimes if you work with um, students or with people experiencing disabilities, they might work differently. I, I think it goes probably into the same direction as the example that Dan gave me of a, of a, a student who, who was an amputee person missing some significant limbs where people thought you can't do this um, and, and then insisting on doing it a certain way. I, I have found and um, I spent a couple of years in an apprenticeship myself as an electrical apprentice that everybody comes up with their own ways of doing things um, and, and the more a, train, a trainer insists on doing things exactly the same way he does it, whether that comes to, in my case, stripping wires and twisting wires or, or mounting boxes or measuring things, or you let people figure out how it works best for them can, can really create a make it or break it moment. And I think also if, if you have someone who's struggling with the speed, I, I think let them struggle with the speed. If the quality of end product is the same, then I think um, why would you keep them from working and doing something they love to do? But advocating for that and allowing them to, to get a certificate that says you are able to provide quality products and then letting them allow 
the flexibility of, of figuring out how fast they can do it or, or in collaboration with their employer or which tasks to do. You might have an apprentice painter or you might a journeyman painter or a master painter who mostly does specific tasks and doesn't do every single part of the project. Um, and letting them find their best fit is also going to be a key component right there. Well, they did give him a lot of time to uh, to increase, and we brought in uh, trainers and job coaches and worked with it for quite a while. They didn't just give up. Yeah. And at a certain point, they said, you know, our bylaws say that you have to pass this level before you can go to the next level, or we can't keep you. But maybe we can find a way to get around that. And, and there's another component you're addressing there. Our bylaws say doesn't necessarily mean that our bylaws can't be changed and, and that i think goes to advocating towards the industry representatives so usually finding some of the the especially if it's a union apprenticeship some of the more influential businesses that are part of the unions um and and helping them understand that just because a person might not achieve a certain level doesn't mean they can't work in that field or can't pass a test um, it, it's it's asking how do we set the standards that we need to do? Yes, like with with saying that, I'm not saying change anything of the life safety requirements. I mean, if you're an electrician and you have wires, bare wires sticking out of a wall, that's a potentially life and death hazard right there that you can't just um, say it's not uh, not crucial. But there are many aspects that are not as crucial as that that I think we can work with. True. Yeah. All right. Thanks. I want to give Corey and Shasta a chance to um, to share with us a little bit of what they've been doing. So first of all, can you introduce yourself briefly? Who are you? Why did I ask you to join us? Corey Ackerman. I'm the transition specialist here at Lagrand High School. And uh, I think you asked us to talk about uh, our cooperation with uh, CTE. Thanks for having me. I'm Shasta Fisher. I'm the CTE Pathway Coordinator at Lagrand High School. So I help students with job shadows, career exploration. Um, I set up partnerships with businesses, um, internships, and I help run the Pathway program here. All right. Welcome, Corey and Shasta. So my first question is, what CTE programs do you have of Ed Legrand that students can access? So I'll jump on that one. Um, so yeah. we, <laughs> we have eight different pathway programs here. Um, it's, it's relatively small, about five or six years that we've, we've labeled it as a pathway program, although the courses have been around um, as labeled as CTE courses. So we have medical, um, agriculture, natural resources, um, a business pathway, hospitality and tourism, which recently changed, it used to be called culinary, um, and then manufacturing. Um, the other two are visual arts and performing arts. Um, so we have eight of them here. Um, students have an opportunity to, to, to take um, a variety of classes in those pathways. Um, to, in order to achieve a pathway by our standard, um, they have to have two and a half credits and have a B or higher, along with a um, some type of job shadow or um, pathway experience job related. Um, so what I do is I meet personally with the students and counselors as well are involved and they um, they help a student their freshman year choose a few different um, pathways or classes. These can change as they grow. Sorry, one second. And um, yep, yeah, so it's a really awesome program. It really gets the students to engage in in different courses and um, get some of that real life experience. Nice. So maybe maybe this one is a little bit more for you, Corey. Um, how have you helped YTP students access uh, career technical education at your school? Basically what uh, here at Legrand, most of our 
YTP students uh, pick classes that they want. I do not know very many of our uh, YTP students that don't select CTE courses. So what I do is just encourage them to uh, get into the class and then I am there for support. So uh, if they have a specific uh, pathway that they want, I, I encourage them and support them in going and talking with Shasta and also with the CTE teachers. And so, uh, like I said, all of our, our YTP students uh, take a uh, at least one CTE course, and then um, they uh, I, I am there to support them in their discovery so that if they're really interested in the say it's welding, um, we have businesses in the community that uh, uh, we can do those uh, you know, experiences with. And so I, I am there to help and support uh, Shasta in her CTE with our YTP students. Okay. Shasta, anything you wanted to add from your perspective? Yeah, um, just what Corey was saying, we try and collaborate. Um, he'll send me referrals of, you know, students that he has um, been talking with that have, you know, different passions or interests and they really want to pursue a pathway um, or jobs to shadow in a specific area. And so we'll get together and talk about, you know, different ways they may need help. Um, and then we'll go about contacting the business and seeing, um, you know, what type of accommodations, you know, they could do, or um, whether it's like they don't have a driver's license or they need a little bit more like um, just queuing or um, a little bit more time with instructions. So things like that. Um, Corey has been very helpful with um, explaining to me the YTP world. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really good to, to work together in that, um, I don't, um, I get to meet a lot more of the students that may have a passion for something, but just need a little bit of extra support. And like he said, we've had, um, students do that in the hospitality program. Um, I've met with students to actually help with like their resume for, um, em employment or internships. So just knowing, um, what a student is interested in. And then also Corey really helps with that piece of accommodations and letting me in on that. Thank you. <clears throat> Next question, have you had a student access your CTE program and then move on to an apprenticeship program um, past school? And I know Corey, in your YTP role, you, you follow along students a little bit longer and see what they're doing. Um, how, did that, how did that work out and how did that, um, what, what is the student doing now? Um, we've had uh, different students, and this is a little bit before Shasta got there, but uh, uh, just in different uh, programs and, and the apprenticeship piece, uh, I do follow those students, and we're a small community, so I can keep in touch with them. Um, we've had, uh, you know, students both that go, have gone through apprenticeships that have stepped out and decided they wanted something else and we've had a student who continued through and uh, they they uh, they weld out at Barretto's. Uh, that's what they, you know they make uh, lawn equipment uh, rototillers uh, so we have students that are out there uh, we've had students that uh, uh, did uh, uh, just multiple things and so um, in in terms of that uh, we've had experiences both um, successfully, where they are still there, just continuing their uh, job. Well, they got into, finished their apprenticeship and did a job. And we have students that uh, decided that was not what they wanted to do. And they've gone on and they, um, I had one who works up at the ski resort or Anthony Lakes. So like, multiple different types of uh, um, outcomes, but uh, they've all continued to uh, look and see what they can do. Are there some things that you feel like have really helped in the way you supported the student to get from the CTE program into the apprenticeship? Um, 
depending on what their their barrier was. I mean, we we have uh, well, I of course we're we're, we're here all of, uh, you know YTP. We connect students with VR. So of course we have those students, and that is an interesting uh, dynamic when you have a student who's going through VR and. Uh, into the apprenticeship, but mostly um, it's really just connecting and, and, and understanding what the student's needs are and making sure that they're um, getting the accommodations that they need. Okay. I'm going to add a question that I didn't send you guys, so I'm going to put you up on the spot just because, you know, we'll, we'll see how flexible you are. But but mostly for, for Shasta, you, you bring the perspective of being a CTE coordinator. Um, and we have a room that's mostly filled with YTP transition specialists and, uh, and some of their supporters. Help us understand your role and, and how you take and, and how transition specialists when trying to support students with disabilities can, can really um, speak your language and, and connect with, with a CTE coordinator well to overcome some of the barriers that may just be matters of perception might not necessarily be the reality or, or just barriers that they seem to to um, make up along the way well i think the first question was my role um yeah like i said earlier so i i meet with students um from freshman year on and I help them with choosing pathways and supported by, we have an actual career center here, so it's really nice. We have a lead career counselor, and then we have a couple other counselors as well. So we all kind of work as a unit to help with students. And on that, we have an Aspire program as well, which is really nice for helping students with secondary you know, trade schools, education. Um, so my role is, I have a lot of different roles, but but helping connect a student um, with a business outside of school, with getting an experience like job shadow or internships, um, letting them know about different um, employment opportunities. It can be um, like a, a free internship, a paid internship. Um, and then I think the biggest thing is from YTP is um, Corey gets all my emails and flyers, but um, for instance, there is a internship at a, a motor dealership. So hearing from Corey, there's a couple students interested in mechanics, um, although they have these, you know, barriers. Um, so, and then him explaining to me, you know, specifically giving me job examples of what that would look like. Um, so helping, you know, speak his language to me. Um, and then just contacting that that business and um, giving them, you know, a little bit of a heads up without too much personal information, which is um, kind of a, a gray area or an area, you know, where we try and keep it confidential. Um, and then, like Corey said, he'll um, even use uh, VR to reach out with the business um, and help them with just employment. So I think awareness is huge and, um, you know, Corey being aware of, of what student is interested in what area so that I can kind of coordinate and hook them up with, with that um, job experience or let the counselors know, hey, be sure to put them in this class because that's going to help them with that um, technical or um, hard school to learn so that they that can help them with their pathway and kind of help lay that foundation. Thank you. Yeah. Last question, and this one, I'm going back to the scripted ones now. <clears throat> um, what do you want our community of practice listeners today take away from your experience of YTP students going through your CTE program? I think both of you can speak to yeah. that. Yeah, I, I think um, just for like myself in terms of YTP, what our, our students really need to be allowed to explore their interests. So, you know, sometimes I think we think, well, I don't think they'd be good at that, but they need to figure that out on their own as, you know, maybe, or, or there's just so much where we just need to allow the student to figure some of these things out. They may have a barrier, but sometimes we need to uh, encourage them to step out and, and look at some of these uh, careers that they hadn't thought about before. Uh, 
So we need to allow them to uh, work on just them being able to understand and uh, accept uh, that they are able to do some of these things uh, and, and that, yeah, they have a barrier, but there are people here to support them. Thank you. I think too, um, that um, just helping students targeting their strengths, um, although they do have a barrier or they may have barriers, um, helping them to see what strengths they have and then bringing that to the workforce or um, um, I, I enjoy helping students with their resumes and helping them to see, um, although you may have this, you know, what are you good at or what are you passionate about? Um, like um, a student, for example, very hardworking, very prompt and eager, eager to learn. And just just knowing that jobs and employment are looking for so many skills that they have and not letting the barriers, you know, be like the main point. Um, and that also CTE, just helping them connect with more opportunities and like Corey said, opening that door to their passion or interest or giving them as, you know, as many equal opportunities as they can, um, or as we can, even if they don't like something, um, they're able to move on from that. And so they're not, you know, committed to a program or school. So, and that's kind of our, well, in my role, my big goal is giving them um, a lot of different experiences and just getting them exposed to various jobs, whether they like it or not. <laughs> Thank you. Are you okay with uh, some questions for the field if anyone has a question for you? Yes. Uh, there's one popping up right away. So uh, Mary Jane in the chat is asking, Shasta, I would love for you to talk to all of the CTE teachers that are struggling to connect with their stu with students that have barriers in their class. I guess it's more of a comment than, than a question. Um, did you want to expand on that a little bit, Mary Jane? Oh, I was just actually giving her a compliment. I just think that's awesome and amazing to see that she is looking at their strengths and really reaching out and including and involving them. Um, because I, I have met some that just are struggling. They're pretty hardcore on their curriculum. And if you can't get through the written and the all the safety protocols and the lectures and you're not able to get to the hands-on and it's it's a sad thing because a lot of our kids are they they would just excel when they get their get to that hands-on portion so so good job shasta <laughs> thank you thanks does anyone else have a question for corey or shasta um I guess, well, I'm trying to formulate my question, but um, kind of piggybacking on what was just said, I think at my school here at Sherwood, we have some um, teachers who are really on, on board with us and with our program, but then there are a few um, that, yeah, we kind of have the roadblocks of those initial quizzes and tests, and then our, our kids struggle just to even get to the, to the hands-on piece. Do you have any, I guess do you have any advice on how to um, how to approach them as we try to get that relationship? Like I said, I have some where they've been great. And um, like I have one, the, the welding teacher, she's letting them do like basically the test orally with them and basically have a conversation about the safety. Um, then I have other teachers who, I don't know, it's just been hard to kind of open that door. I don't know if you have suggestions. Or you can add on, but um, yeah, I, I would say um, just awareness. Me and Corey have a very good relationship. Like we, we are in it for the kids. We want to work together. Um, so um, I think that's the goal too with with all the teachers and everything but like you said sometimes there's those roadblocks and and things get in the way um but i think having um a conversation you know with with the teacher um and discussing um you know other other options besides what's not working and focusing on solution versus the problem 
um, and kind of just listing off some some options so that they can um, and bringing kind of big picture that you know if they're not able to do this like how are they gonna you know um, try try that job or try that um, to get into that program so uh, and then again maybe bring in like extra supervision or um, extra assistance too if it's like a safety thing so that's kind of just what I have off the top of my head if you want to add anything Corey. Yeah, um, here at LeGrand, we uh, have a, a paraprofessional or a, a teaching assistant who's dedicated for CTE. So uh, she's in classes that uh, where, um, you know, like you just said in welding, when they have to go do the, uh, the written part uh, there to assist the student to make sure that they're able to go through that and, uh, and just kind of put the teacher at ease, just as, you know, show that there's support there um, where you know if, if they have questions just to ask and and and, and how to work with the student um, so we, we try to make sure that we just have um, you know that communication open at, at the very beginning thank you kia you have your hand up can you hear me yep Oh, okay. Um, first, I just wanted to say thank you, Garrett, for doing this presentation. And then I also want to say uh, kudos to you, Corey, and to you, Shasta. Um, Corey, I remember meeting you when I first started in YTP, and um, some of the, the insights and things that you had shared with me were just great. And, um, and so it's wonderful to see you and hear what um, other awesome things that you're doing. Um, this is definitely on my bucket list of things to do here in Portland Public. Um, right now I'm dealing with some other <laughs> system things uh, that I am doing with CTE um, that has been really great for our team. Uh, but this is something that that's an in-school system that I would like to try to tackle at one of my schools that is very CTE focused high school, which is Benson High School. So that is on my bucket list of things to do. So I'll definitely be reaching out to you, Corey, and to you, Shasta. So I just wanted to say thank you, and you guys are doing an awesome job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and feel free to reach out. Happy to help. Thanks, Corey and Shasta. And I think as, as a closing thought, um, from my perspective and from the conversations I've had and from the, the reading and research that went into today's COP, um, one of the things that really inspired me was when I heard um, someone saying that if you have a student who feels that they're in a place that they really belong and that they're really interested in, they are so much less likely to be a disturbance and to be a safety hazard and, and to create issues than a student who is forced to sit in a class where they don't want to be. And so I, th I think that could be another good, good talking point, especially um, going back to Megan's comments. If you have teachers that where, where they are, are just sticking up to, you have to pass the test and you have to do these things and, and they struggle with the, with the classroom and the sitting still portion and the reading and the writing and, and the comprehension. But once their hands get into something and they're, they're entering the zone, so to speak, um, they're going to do really well. And, and that's something that I have seen in, in people, not, not even work related, but people um, struggling severely with ADHD, where if, if, if they got a task that they enjoyed, they could be occupied and focused for hours. And you're wondering, who is this person that, that you just see bouncing off the walls all day long otherwise? Um, and, and so I think it's, it's something to, to take into consideration. Again, I think it's at least at the beginning for those teachers, they, they're gonna to have to take a risk. They're gonna to have to pick that one student that they're gonna let in and see how it goes. But if it's the right students they pick for the right reasons, I think that can really change the way your CTE classes are gonna be offered at your school. And with that, we're hitting time. So thanks for everyone to join us here today. I hope you learned something or are inspired by something that has been said or shared. Um, if you have questions, Corey and Chasta already said they would be more than happy to uh, answer questions and, and uh, connect with you. Um, th this is the beauty of having this community of practice to be able to reach out to one another and learn from one another experiences and see 
um, some of the models that work and, and, and figure out how we can uh, import them into our own system. So that's always a lot of fun. So thanks very much for joining us and we'll see you again in May. Thank you.